Common sports played by Malaysians. Hi, my name is Isra Shuriz Azril de Mama Shukur and I'm from a Faculty of Civil Engineering and Built Environmental. Hello and hi. So let me introduce myself first. My name is Muhammad Karunaim bin Ismail. I'm from Faculty of Civil Engineering and Built Environment. So check this out. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. My name is Muhammad Azik Fikri. My my name is Pang Fei Cheng. I am from F Club. Hi, I'm Siraj Mukir Bedridos. I'm from CB Engineering and Architecture Faculty. Today is day. Hi, everyone. Hello, guys. Don't forget to follow me and enjoy the video. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Yul Iskandar bin Zikiman. I am Faculty of Civil Engineering and Built Environmental. Let's go! Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. My name is Noam Akmal Muhaimin bin Muhammad. I'm from Faculty of Civil Engineering, SCAP. <laughs> okay, hi guys. My name is Muhammad Ali Fakim bin Sharul Zaman. I am from FCAP. Assalamualaikum and hi. My name is Muhammad Nazi Ashab bin Azmin from FKA. Uh, Assalamualaikum. My name is Arizal Ashab uh, I'm from Faculty of Civil Engineering. That's all. Thank you. Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Nazir Razik bin Abaka. I'm from Faculty of Civil Engineering and Built Environment. Hi guys, my name is Sunu Omar Hikam I'm from Faculty of Civil Engineering and Environment. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Nafisa Naki bin Zahidi from Faculty of Civil Engineering and Environment. <laughs> Right now, I'm going to talk about the history of badminton. The, be the beginning of badminton can be traced from the mid of 1800th century, where it was created by British military officer stationed in British India. Originally, it's called better door rather than badminton. It used of a shuttlecock. The shuttlecock is a form of hemisphere ball uh, attached with 16 boost pendant with with the weight of 6 grams, if I'm not mistaken, rather than a ball, has remained constant over the years. Like most of racket sport, badminton is England. Uh, badminton in England was played by the upper class. However, rather than athletic game we see today, it was a simple early competition where players would try to hit the shuttlecock as many times as possible without it hitting the ground. Um, we can see that right now, there's an Olympic sport and then uh, some small competition but mostly like me, the students will spend their time in the evening by playing the badminton, hitting the ball to the net, having fun. The sport of badminton underwent its first significant change in the 18th century when British Army officer in India introduced a net and a chart. Um, when when the net and the court being introduced, it raised the difficulty of the game significantly where there's a limit how far you can hit the badminton and then you have to hit fast through the pass through the the net going over over the top um, to gain the point of to to play the game more smoothly. The game was brought back to England by a retired officer and played at the Duke Wilford home, Badminton House in Gloucestershire in England, from, if I'm not mistaken. I think from that point onward, the game known as Badminton. Since 1992, Badminton has been an Olympic sport. Uh, right now we have Li Chong Wei. I think that's all that I know. Thank you. Who is he? Let's take a look. 
who doesn't know Lee Chong Wei, a Malaysian star, a true hero, and the greatest of all the time. This legend was born on 21st of October 1982 in Bagan Malaysia. He was ranked first worldwide for 349 weeks, including a 199 week streak from 21st of August 2008 to 14th June 2012. He is also a triple silver medalist at the Olympic Games and the sixth Malaysian to win an Olympic medal. He also became the first badminton player in men's singles to win all the titles of the Super Series. In the middle of his career, Lee Chong Wei finally met an opponent he couldn't beat, which is the world's news of his life. Lee Chong Wei was diagnosed with early stage nose cancer in September 2018, which led him to announce his retirement from badminton one year later. Uh, retirement for the uh, 19 years in the DM. So that's it. A little bit about Lee Chong Wei's life. As a fan, of course, I miss him so much to see him to play on the court, to see him to play in the big tournament such as Olympic and All England. But what can we do? He is tired already. So now we have another Lee, but he is not another Lee Chong Wei. So I think I'm gonna stop here and don't forget to support our badminton team. That's all for me. Tell me good and good bye. Check through my experience of playing badminton. It has been an incredible junior field with excitement and personal growth. Badminton is a fun and fast sport that people love to play all around the world. In this morning, hitting a shutter call with a line break racket over a net. From the moment I pick up the racket, hit the shutter call, I know that I have something special in my life. Badminton is more than just like a game. It's fast play, strategy, and physical demanding sport. Every strength and every decision made on the court will make a different move. But it's not just about the games itself, it's about people you meet and the friendship you form. Badminton actually brings together individuals from different backgrounds and age. The shared passion for the sport creates a sense of friendship and support that extends beyond the court. Actually, I want to bring you guys to have a tour of Badminton Court provided education by Raja. This personally is high sold after by students and is often booked by students. But the Badminton Court is under Revolutions project, so I bring you guys to see the outdoor Badminton Court that we play in College Kodiaman Wa Campus Association, which is in Korea. So Badminton is a traditional tool fit and intro activity, however, we often to see it played out outside. Today, in Badminton outside, under the sun provides us extra health benefit. As we play at outside, our body will be taken in vitamin D. And Badminton Court is a rectangular shape. And that is divided into two different sections and accessible dimension and marking. Badminton Court is 13.4 meters long and 6.1 meters wide for single matches. For double matches, the view remains the same, but the length extends to 13.4. Badminton have taught me the importance of staying physical active and leading a healthy lifestyle. We have given me a deep appreciation for the beauty of movements and the benefit of an overall well-being. Playing badminton has been an amazing junior of the self-discovery and personal development. You have taught me reasonize, discipline, and the joy of pursuing an active lifestyle. I encourage each of you to explore the world of badminton and experience it. So grab a racket, enjoy the games, and let badminton inline your passion for sport and goal. Thank you. The history of soccer football. How about details about the evolution along the age and maybe your biggest Christie in really knowing? Who invented the soccer football? Who was right? Or who did it happen? Where and why? The history of the soccer ball. The history of the soccer ball dates back to ancient times. From a couple centuries BC to about 200 A. The Chinese used balls made from the animal skins in a game called Su Chu. Su Chu, which a player had to pass them throughout the net, stretched between two poles. In the ancient Greece, Roman and even the Egyptians. 
recorded who have enjoyed a similar game that involved kicking a match ball. Charles Goodyear was the first person to make a soccer ball in 1855, using the same concept that you'll still practice today in making soccer balls. Charles had even vulcanized rubber back in 1837. Where is it? However, the first soccer ball made out of the vulcanized rubber was here later in 1855. So, before the invention of vulcanized rubber and the soccer ball, the story of soccer showed pupils that they're kicking all kinds of things on ground instead of the soccer ball. Only decade later in 1865, Charles Goodyear soccer balls became the official match balls in the first organized soccer league in England. Technology over the past 20 years have advanced and involved every part of the soccer game, including soccer balls, uniforms, stadium, trees, fans, and every other part of the game. Today, every league and competition has its own design for the soccer ball that is used in the different competition. Just like the World Cup balls are customized for each tournament every four years. Our major cup championship also have their own design and logos for the ball used in the game. Soccer balls we see today are meant to their intent to make them suit more than usual, right? Making the game more exciting with more goals being scored. With the way technology is going, the soccer ball history is taking sharp. Go from the normal balls used in 1990s. World Cup Ball is the first FIFA World Cup made by the fan. That's all from me, I'm an agent Shadid Azim, CF 20176. Thank you, and see you again. Malaysia had a lot of iconic players, so these are a few legendary players that was listed as Century FIFA Club, such as Moktadari, Jin An, Shukor, and other else. But today, I would like to share to you one of the amazing players who is Zainal Abidin Hassan, who is known as the best Malaysian footballer in era 80s to 90s. Let me talk briefly about Zainal Abidin Hassan. So basically, he was retired from football in 1999, then he was selected to be a coach for Pahang FA. For the first time, he brought Pahang FA and guided them to win their first Malaysia Super League title. It was a great move for Zainal Abidin Hassan's career as a coach. Previously, Zainal Abidin Hassan is a former Malaysian soccer star. He is a versatile player who can play in multiple positions, either striker or defender. At the same time, he can carry the team until the end of the league. For me, he was very brilliant players because he can play football more than one role. He also inspired me as well. Then let me talk about Zainal Abidin Hassan's appearance. So he started his football career with Slango FA at the age of 18 years old. Zainal also made his international debut in 1980 during the Decathlon against Indonesia. He played along with other Malaysian legendary strikers such as Muktadari, Arbugam, Sochin and other recognized faces in Malaysia football. Zainal was very inspired me as he optimist player because he was the captain for national team in SEA Games, ASEA Games and Merdeka Tournament. He had inspired by the team members of his spirit to win any particular game. So next, let me talk about Zainal Abidin Hassan's achievement. So Zainal has scored a total of 193 goals in 367 appearances for Slango and Pahang Club. So that was a very brilliant record for his career. For national team Malaysia, he has scored a total of 78 goals in 102 appearances. Other than that, about his achievement, Zainal was awarded a Golden Boot by Malaysia League in 1983 and 1986. He also was the most valuable player according FF Championship. Regarding by FIFA, Zainal also was recognized in the top 10 top scorer player long time ago, same with other top players such as Cristiano Ronaldo, Pele, and other else. For me, he was very brilliant players to be an idols for young generation players to move more further. Even he already achieved a lot of award, either by local association or FIFA award. I think that's all for me about the Malaysian icon. Thank you. Takro. Simple. Just a ball. Just get it over the net. Receive. Set. Kick. Receive. Set. Oh, watch this. Oh, I want to talk about the street of Sipat Takro. Sepak takraw is a sport of soccer and volleyball. It is play on a double court, and it is also not allowed to touch the ball with your hand. The various historical calls for time when it is during the reign of Sultan Basim Shah Ibn Almar, Sultan of Dhaka Shah, his son Rahman, Raja Ahmad was managed by the country for King the Tiger Sign in the district of the Sultan. Raja Ahmad was later appointed as Sultan in Pahang, the title of Sultan Muhammad Shah, his one in the Almar of Sultan Basim Shah. Hello everyone.
Simon, I would like to say thank you for giving your utmost attention for our documentary. You have learned about the three sports played by Malaysians and the histories and how to play them. We hope that this documentary has been beneficial to all of you. Thank you and have a pleasant day.